Hey guys, I'm back again. I've got some more babies to show you. I've got a really, really cool clutch I've been looking forward to for a long time. So we're going to get into that in just a minute. Uh, I also have a clutch to cut here. Um, actually, some of these are, are cutting themselves out. Um, but this is a, from Cinnamon Banana Double Hat Genetic Stripe Clown to a Cinnamon Pewter Double Hat Genetic Stripe Clown. So um, we're going to see what comes out of here. And like I said, a couple of these are already hatching on their own. So I'm going to I'm going to see if I can hit on a second uh, genetic stripe clown for this year. Uh, I've had multiple chances. I've actually got several more clutches that are hatching right now too. So um, hopefully I'll hit on more G stripe clowns. That looks like uh, banana cinnamon. The odds of hitting a G-stripe clown on this is only 1 in 16. Uh, next year, my odds will go way up because I'll actually have some visual G-stripe clown males breeding these same double het females. It's like a pewter or pewter lesser. Is there lesser in this? No. Nope, so it's just a pewter. We are hatching so many cool things this year. I can't believe it. Like every day the incubators just got all kinds of just awesome, awesome babies in there. That I would say is either a um, super cinnamon pastel or possibly a banana super cinnamon pastel. Our egg laying season is kind of winding down. I think I counted probably around 40 more females. They're still gravid. That's a super cinnamon banana, I believe. Unfortunately, I had to do combos that I could produce super cinnamons because those are just the genetics that my males and females have. Um, so I, um, you know, I don't really want to produce super cinnamons in this clutch because you, I don't think you're going to know if they're a G stripe or clown or both and that's the downside to doing this you know i'll have a bunch of super cinnamon things that i don't know what else is in there there's a cinnamon banana g stripe always happy to see those would have been nice if there was clown in there but it didn't look like it Ooh. I think we hit on, if I had to guess, I'd say that's a pewter G-stripe clown. I really want to open this up more to look at it, but I'm not a fan of doing that. I like to just open them up and up to see what's in there. I don't want to disturb them too much and get them to prematurely crawl up before their yolk is completely absorbed. But I would say that is a cinnamon pewter g-stripe clown and since it's not a banana that will probably be a female too so guess what she'll be staying here I need females of this particular combo okay so now the clutch I'm really really excited to show you guys um, so you, a lot of you guys know I'm really into the genetic stripes especially leopard genetic stripes so I wanted to do banana leopard genetic stripes, and it did produce a pastel banana leopard genetic stripe last year. Um, the pastel kind of breaks up the leopard, the, the, the really strong striping of the leopard genetic stripe a little bit. So it was a nice looking snake, but it wasn't quite the look I was looking for. So this time I, I bred a visible leopard G stripe to a banana G stripe. So my odds went way up to get that. Okay, so. Let's start with the most uh, normal babies first. Oh, these just came out. They j literally just hatched this morning. So I barely even had a chance to look at these, but I know that they're pretty cool. Okay. So that's a genetic stripe. It's actually got quite a bit of banding on it, which is not super typical of a genetic stripe, but they have them sometimes. Like I said, they, they don't normally have banding across the, the lighter stripe. 
So it's a little bit of an in, unusual one. Okay, here's another one. I remember back in the early 2000s when just a regular genetic stripe was just so unusual. You know, it just such a different look for a ball python. Now there weren't all the different combos that are out there now of other types. So you know, anything different back then, especially pattern morphs, so pattern and color morphs were really unusual and, and just so different from a normal ball python. Okay, so these guys. Okay, then, and these guys have some perlite on them yet from the incubation container. If you notice the little white things on them, that's just the perlite. Okay, there is a really nice leopard genetic stripe. Here's another one. These guys are really squirmy considering they just hatched. So those are leopard G-stripes. Really bold striping down either side of the back. And my thought was I can really um, produce some really cool colors into this and just make some incredible morphs. And I don't know why these guys are so squirmy. Okay, here's a banana G-stripe. Really great looking when they're babies. They're not the best looking as adults, you know, honestly, you know, I try to be honest about things and they they're, they look okay, but they're not, you know, they look so much better as babies than they do as adults that um, it's just kind of, um, you know, it'd be nice to keep them looking like this. Well, that's the whole purpose of me getting leopard into it and other genes too. I'm, I'm actually working on combining several different genes with the leopard to make like a really bright, intense genetic stripe that's going to stay that way as an adult, or at least as close as it can. Okay, so here is the leopard banana genetic stripe. I hope you guys are as impressed as I am with that. I mean, look at the difference in the contrast. You know, of course these guys haven't shed yet. This is going to look better after a shed or two than it does right now, but I was so excited about these I just had to had to show you guys today. I needed some uh, content for a video today and you guys are getting it. And you guys are gonna see this the same day that I'm filming, if you're watching on the 22nd of July. So that is definitely my favorite genetic stripe of the year. I produced a few nice ones, um, but I don't think you can beat this in terms of color and pattern. So that, that bold, purple pattern is going to, that striping is going to stay there as an adult. He's got some really, really nice deep oranges. And I'm working on adding other colors into this, like other dark jeans and, you know, a lot of different things into the leopard genetic stripes. But uh, the banana was the one that I really wanted to see this year. So really happy this worked out. Um, I do have another clutch of these incubating too. So I imagine I'll probably end up keeping this one, but not hundred percent and this is a female so yeah I have a feeling she'll probably be staying here but hopefully in my next clutch I'll get a couple more in and I'll actually have a few that are available so anyway hope you guys like that um, I'll be back again very soon uh, with another uh, showing some more stuff I think my next video is going to be on some clown stuff so uh, uh, stay tuned for that and also make sure to Check out my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com. I'm actually going to be working the rest of the day on getting all of these, not all, but getting as many of these as I can up on the website. So we're going to take the pictures today, uh, get the files on the website, and then I'll add the pictures in hopefully tomorrow. So I'm really hoping to get some new stuff up for sale. I've got so many awesome animals that I'm going to be selling this year, and I just really hope I have the time to get them set up. The problem is I've got all my clutches kind of at one time, of the year this year so I'm kind of I went from having nothing to having a lot of stuff and just kind of a little bit overwhelming um, I'm just working mostly on trying to get them all set up and getting them all fed and uh, and then you know getting the pictures up so stay tuned for that make sure to check out my website royalconstrictordesigns.com I'll be back very soon with another video for you